Nutters. Welcome to the Buck Nuts Morning 5 here on Monday, June 19th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm very happy to be joined by the Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Curlick. Bill, obviously, Matthew Jones uh, became the latest member of Ohio State's outstanding 2018 recruiting class that elevates them to the number one class in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Um, tell us about Matthew Jones. He's listed as a defensive tackle, ranked as the number three D tackle in the country, but he's going to be an offensive lineman for the Buckeyes, most likely, correct? I think so. Um, his coach tends to think so. Uh, you know, he's, he's a great prospect on both sides of the ball. It was interesting. Uh, I was talking to his coach at camp on Saturday, and um, uh, I mentioned how just how impressive Matthew looked just looking at him, passing the look test and all. Um, you know, very uh, a big young man that uh, um, you know, I think is going to be an outstanding player for the Buckeyes. And when I, I mentioned how good his coach looked, uh, or I mentioned how good he looked to his coach, uh, his response was, well, wait till you see him move. Um, and, and, you know, that's something that uh, his coach talks about, that he moves so well. He moves as well enough and is agile enough and uh, to play on the defensive line, but he also has the skills of an offensive lineman. And because of that, taking those skills over to the offense and the way he moves, his coach feels he can be a first-round draft choice in the NFL draft one day. And then he, he's a little step down. He feels like he could be a first or second round pick as a defensive lineman in the NFL draft. So he rates him a little bit higher on offense. Um, you, you look at Ohio State's needs, you know, I know you know, Dave, that Urban Meyer has mentioned that they've missed on some offensive linemen in recent years. He's kind of lamented that. And, and certainly Matthew Jones could be a guy that maybe could help uh, make up for maybe a few of those misses. Bill, is this the year the Buckeyes are going to finish with the number one ranked recruiting class in the country? You know, I really think it is. Um, uh, of course, you always, even though Alabama is not doing well right now, you know that they're going to uh, end up with, a, with an outstanding recruiting class. It's just that I don't expect them to sign uh, a full 25 this year, and you know sometimes they go over that full 25, of course. But uh, I don't expect them to sign even 25 this year, and. Um, you know, Ohio State, I think, is going to be right around that 25 mark. I think they're going to be at 23, 24. You just never know because you don't know exactly who's going to leave early for the NFL, for instance. But I think they're going to be right around that. And with the quality they're getting, if they're right around that 25, I cannot see anybody beating them for the top class in the country. Uh, they have uh, high quality, and they're going to have the quantity this year. They had the, the high quality last year, but they, quote, unquote, only signed 21 prospects. They have just as much quality this year, and they're going to be able to sign 25. It's very exciting. Um, hopefully the Buckeyes can win that mythical recruiting national championship. Um, the, I want to talk about maybe the next couple guys who could possibly commit. I know, they're, you know everything's fluid. There could be a guy who commits that you're, we're not expecting, but – uh, maybe Blue Smith, Jeremy Rucker. Talk about those two. Could those maybe be the next two to pop? Who else could be kind of in the mix to uh, maybe join this class in the near future? Well, Blue told me um, he's on um, uh, at camp Saturday. He did not work out, but he was at camp, and he told me um, that he plans as of right now to stick with his July time frame. His dad thinks that you know that, that could even get set back a little bit to the beginning of the football season, um, but uh, and we'll see. It, it could, but right now. Blue says that he is still thinking to, that he will stick with sometime in July. He doesn't know exactly when, but sometime in July, as he put it to me. So certainly he's a candidate. I think Rucker, uh, Jeremy Rucker could certainly uh, make his decision uh, sometime in July as well. Uh, I would not rule totally rule out June, but I, I think sometime in July or August is more likely. Um, and then you've got the linebacker situation. Uh, Michael Harris was at camp on Saturday working out. Um, before that, uh, Kayvon Pope worked out at camp earlier in the week. And, you know, one of those two guys, they're both expecting to talk to Ohio State again this week. Michael Harris told me uh, yesterday when I spoke with him again on Sunday that he expects to talk to Ohio State again, that they are waiting for his ACP score, and I'm sure they are continuing to evaluate him after they saw him Saturday. Uh, same with Kayvon Pope. They saw him at camp. I'm sure they're continuing to evaluate him and in that situation as well. Uh, they are waiting for all of his academic information, transcripts, and all to come in. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But there's not much doubt in my mind that both Kayvon Pope 
and Michael Harris would like to be an Ohio State Buckeye, and we'll see what the staff does with that situation and how that, you know, that, that certainly could be a commitment it, it, uh, in the near future. We'll see what happens. We have a pretty cool thread on the front row message board that was started. It looks like late last night by uh, poster Script Urban, one of our subscribers. And uh, this is right down your alley. I, I find this very interesting because Urban has said he wants to put a, you know, more of an emphasis on Ohio. Um, but they're recruiting so well nationally. Maybe they're not going to get as many Ohio kids. I think he said they want to be 50-50 um, roughly. And I don't think there's – it's certainly not going to be 50-50. Um, the over-under is 5.5. How many Ohio kids Ohio State will land in the 2018 class? I took the over, but barely. I think they're going to finish with six. There's always, as you know, there's always, you know, an under-the-radar Ohio prospect that emerges late in the process. You know, guys like Brady Taylor and Malik Harrison and Robert Landers. Every year there's somebody like that. Thayer Munford last year, uh, although they, I know they're in on him the entire way. Um, they've had to work out some other things, but... Um, Hey, uh, over under 5.5 Ohio kids in the 2018 class. Where are you going, Bill? You know, uh, Dave, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go for the under this time. Wow. Um, and, and there is, by the way, uh, talking about the 50 50 thing, there is not a ghost of a chance that it's going to be right. 50 50 this year. Um, but, uh, you know, you look at it right now, and they have uh, obviously committed. They've got Dallas Gantt. Um, linebacker from Toledo, and they've got Jalen Gill, the outstanding running back, H back, uh, athlete from Westerville South High School. So they've got those two Ohio ones committed this is, at this point. Uh, I feel good about saying Jackson Carmen is going to be a Buckeye. That would be three. Uh, then you've got, uh, uh, you've got, um, Blue Smith that we talked about. That would be four. And the fifth one that I, I'm taking right now to be a Buckeye, uh, would be Tyreek Smith. So I think that's where the, the five and a half comes in. You know, do they find that extra guy? And you make a good point. There always seems to be, um, that Ohio one at the end that, uh, rises up and they offer a scholarship to or have offered a scholarship to, but a lot of times they, they offer them later on in that, uh, person takes the scholarship. But in this case, I just, I just think there's so many great prospects out there that want to be Buckeyes or could be Buckeyes from out of state, that that's going to end up being what wins the day and that uh, uh, I'll go with the under at this point. Very interesting. Yeah, and, you know, to be fair to Urban, he said that way back on signing day um, when, you know, I'm sure he was hoping that things would go as well as they are with the out-of-state recruits. Maybe he didn't even think they're going to go quite this well. So that's this is not a recent quote from Urban. That was way back on signing day. He said he was shooting for 50-50 split um, as far as Ohio kids and out-of-state. But uh, I don't think Buckeye fans care um, as long as – like I know they don't. As long as the Buckeyes recruit well, that is all that matters. Um, hey, before I let you go, um, speaking of a couple kids from Ohio um, that were recently recruited by Ohio State, uh, Luke Farrell and Jake Hausman uh, registered last year. They're going to have to play, at least one of them's going to have to play a key role this year, Bill, as a redshirt freshman at tight end because A.J. Alexander's out for the season. I know they might move Rashad Berry back over there, but Farrell and Hosman, they, one of those guys is going to play a big role. It sounds like Farrell is ahead of, of Hosman on the depth chart, at least you know, leaving spring. Um, just talk about those two guys. If they do have to play key roles this year, what can fans expect out of those two? Well, I, you know, that's why you bring in the, the players uh, – to, to be the, the next wave, so to speak. And when those two were in high school, you know, I thought they were great, great prospects. Um, uh, they were two of the top uh, five, six, seven tight ends in the country that were both in the same Ohio State recruiting class. And, you know, I, I, when I looked at them both in high school, I thought uh, even though most had uh, Halsman rated slightly ahead of Farrell, you know, I kind of had it the opposite. My feeling was I, I kind of, you know, I slightly preferred Farrell, uh, but not by much. I, I thought they were both great prospects. I still think they're both going to be outstanding players for Ohio State. Um, you know, Farrell a little bit more athletic, I felt like. Uh, Hausman a little bit uh, uh, more polished and a better blocker at that point. Uh, but both tremendous prospects. And I think, um, I guess I'm not, not surprised that maybe Farrell has a slight edge. But I think they're both going to be very good players for Ohio State. It's just a matter of when. 
when they do those dunk contests over there with the players, the basketball, or the football team does their dunk contest, Farrell is always one of the guys that's like in that final five. Like he is an athletic dude, big guy at six foot six. So yeah, it sounds like you were on, you were on top of that, Bill. You said all along you thought Farrell was the better of the two prospects, like you said, even though Hosman was ranked a little bit higher than Farrell by the, uh, the national rankings. But uh, great stuff is always from the dean of Ohio State football recruiting. He was all over it this weekend. He's all over it every day, 24-7. No pun intended. Bill Curlick is all, all over recruiting, so thank you very much to the Dean, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. hope you have a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best band in the land. Bye. Bye.